my name is Bassam Dali, and I'm the head of School of Mechanical Engineering at the University of Adelaide, and I'm from the Center for Energy Technology, who were co-sponsoring this event. Tonight's session will cover uh, different renewable sources and the infrastructure required to be able to uh, implement those and integrate it into the grid. In particular, we'll have experts who talk about wind energy, both in big turbines and small turbines, and a uh, solar uh, PV and solar thermal. And also, we'll be talking about what sort of infrastructure and pathways we require to integrate these renewable energies into the grid and making more efficient integration. Australia's 20% renewable target by 2020 gives this country an opportunity to build on its world-class renewable resources. In the next decade, this renewable energy is likely to be developed and delivered through proven technologies such as wind, solar and biomass. Indeed, some 7,000 megawatts of wind may be required, uh, representing an investment of some 15 to 20 billion dollars. That's seven 100 megawatt wind farms every year for the next decade. And solar PV has an interesting role to play as well, and an increasing role. And as we know, Australia is ideally suited to utilise the sun because it shines when it's hottest and when it's hottest is when we use most electricity in the summertime. But renewables can be intermittent as well. Sometimes the wind doesn't blow when it's hot. Sometimes the sun doesn't shine when it's cold. And therefore there's a role to supplement these renewables with proven technologies in thermal fuels like natural gas uh, combined cycle or natural gas open cycle generation. And ultimately, many of the renewable resources are not best placed where um, our people live. And that means technologies like transmission systems need to be brought into play to bring the resources uh, which we convert into electricity from those distant areas to the areas where we live. So these are some of the challenges and some of the opportunities that Australia faces as it moves to meet our new renewable energy targets in the decade ahead. It's important with renewable energy to find a way to bring that energy to the market. And in South Australia, a lot of our renewable energy resources are quite remote from our infrastructure grid. So we need to find another way to connect these resources because it's quite expensive to do so. And the South Australian Government has recently commissioned a green grid study and this study looked at a collaborative way of bringing the energy to the market from the Air Peninsula. And it's looking at bringing 2,000 megawatts of wind power to our grid and exporting that power to the eastern states. As we consider uh, a sustainable energy future for Australia, it's very important that we consider the mix of technologies that we have, have to draw on. Australia has the highest solar irradiation of any continent in the world. And in fact, uh, a square just 50 kilometres by 50 kilometres would, would cover and provide all of Australia's electricity. Um, concentrating solar thermal is just one sort of, of solar technology that uh, can help provide uh, one of the technologies for this mix. It's a technology that's growing rapidly around the world at the moment. Um, it has a number of attractions, uh, one being that it, uh, it, it actually uses a lot of the technology from the power industry today. So the transition from fossil fuel to solar can happen fairly seamlessly. It's also able to provide dispatchable electricity, uh, electricity after the sun goes down, because storage can be integrated into the system. Uh, presently, there, there's over 2 million square metres of solar collectors uh, operating around the world at the moment. In fact, they've been operating for 20 years. It's a technology that works, and it's a technology that's expanding rapidly at the moment. It can also produce liquid fuels, not just electricity. Uh, we, we see a great future for concentrating solar power. 